<laughs> Everybody, welcome to our EF talk on traveling in China. We are super excited to give you a little bit of insight today on what it's like to travel in China. Exactly.、Um, we're going to give you a bit of an overview of what our travel experiences、mm-hmm. have been like、um, these last couple of years, and a little bit more about our background as well. Absolutely. So,、uh, so why don't We get started by introducing ourselves, perhaps. Then, yeah, yeah absolutely,、go. absolutely. So,、uh, my name is Harris Green. I'm one of the、uh, EF International Teacher Recruiters right here in Shanghai, alongside Joanna.、Um, and、uh, here, I've been here actually in Shanghai for about just over a year now.、Mm-hmm. And I actually came from Canada, so originally from Canada. This is my first time in Asia, so it's obviously been quite an experience traveling. Yeah.、Um, I have when I've been out here. Actually, this is the major reason why I came to to work with EF in China was to travel to see Asia, to see China. It is such an amazing country, isn't it?、Um, and, and I'm going to chat a little bit more about some of my experiences here. But I figured I'd give you time to introduce yourself quickly. Thank you. So I'm Joanne. I'm also another international teacher recruiter. I actually started off as a teacher myself、mm-hmm. in Beijing、um, for my first year, and then I moved down to Shanghai to become a recruiter and join our TRT team.、Um, so it's been an exciting almost two years in China so far. And like Harris said, there's so much to do, so、mm-hmm. much to see. So it's been very exciting,、uh, and、yeah. we're really excited to just show you show、yeah. you our experiences. So maybe let's talk about our. Top two,、uh, top two, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really hard to narrow this know, down, it honestly. <laughs>、um, it's funny. I've only been here for a year, but it seems like we've been able to see so much in that time. I,、um, I think probably my top experience, looking back, would be probably I'd say my first big trip that I took out here to Yunnan.、Okay. And I think we touched on this in one of our last talks where we were talking about food、uh, in Yunnan. Obviously, for me, when I travel,、uh, food is a big part of it. Um, it's a common <laughs> exactly. It is a common language, and live, going to Yunnan, I spent、uh, just over a week there,、uh, just after our New Year's actually、yeah. last year. And I went with a friend, just the two of us, sort of our first foray, I guess you could say,、yeah. into traveling in China. It was the southwestern province, southwest province in China.、Uh, we took a flight there, and we took buses around. We flew into Kunming,、um, and then we ended up actually celebrating New Year's Eve. Uh, having a bonfire with some locals,、awesome. um, and just sort of in this this small town area in, outside of Dali, it was just such a special experience. And、uh, interacting yeah. with the locals,、yeah. I think, is a big part、mm-hmm. of what makes the experience、yeah. very unique in China. Is、yeah. interacting with locals, getting to know where they're coming from,、mm-hmm. and what life in their absolutely cities like. And And as you said, you don't, you know, food is a common language,、uh, travel is a common language. You don't necessarily need to speak a lot of Chinese.、That's、When、true. I first made this trip to Yunnan, I was only a few months into my travel here in China, and I never really had traveled in China before. So we ended up with these locals celebrating New Year's、uh, just by sort of a few gestures,、yeah. being kind, <laughs> sort of looking like we were interested, you know, talking about the food, food. pointing gestures, and、uh, and you end up in some fun situations.、Definitely. And and what about you? Your top experience, perhaps? Top experience. I think probably、mm-hmm. when my first travel experience in China was to Inner Mongolia.、Uh, so it was all the way up north.、Uh, I took an overnight train,、uh-huh. a sleeper train. <laughs> my first sleeper train experience in China.、Mm-hmm. It was almost thirteen hours long. So we took it overnight and then arrived in Inner Mongolia in the morning.、Wow. So that was a very unique experience、yeah. in itself. And then we just spent a long weekend in Inner Mongolia.、Yeah. So a really good thing about being a teacher and being able to travel、yeah. is that you can take long weekends. And actually explore、yeah. the vast majority of the country. It's a nice. And, and did you do that on your on your own in Mongolia? I did. So okay, I went、yeah. with a group of fellow、mm-hmm. teachers.、Okay. Um, we all signed up for a tour,、mm-hmm. and we paid a fee, and a、oh. very reasonable fee. I don't remember the exact amount <laughs> right now, but it was、yeah. reasonable, and everything was taken care of for us. So we were picked、wow. up once we got to the train station, taken to a hostel, and then we went on yurt, we, yurts. We slept、mm-hmm. in the grass huts.、Oh, okay, so、yeah. it was really cool.、Wow. Um, we rode camels in the desert and got to try really unique cuisines up north.、Wow. Wow. There's a lot of Muslim、um, influence、Absolutely, as well, so、yeah. it was really different from what we were experiencing in Beijing, for example. And really good to again get to know the locals. So、uh, yeah, what was it like getting to know the locals up there?、Uh, there's a lot of culture、um, yeah. in Inner Mongolia, and a lot of influences from、mm-hmm. other countries as well. So、mm-hmm. it was really unique. And again, sleeping in a yurt <laughs> in the grasslands is also that's a pretty special experience. I think that's something you look back at. Yes,、yeah. and riding camels and horses、yeah. in the desert as well. So that was really、Absolutely. unique and one of probably the top experiences I've had、yeah. over here. That's pretty stunning, and you can just see even in, in in talking about that the two different types of experience、yes. you've had. That was the northeastern part、yes. of China, 
all the way to the southwestern part, you know, traveling on your own, traveling in groups. There's just so many different things you can do here. Definitely. And I think we could probably talk about our top experiences here for a long time. Definitely. Um, I know you also had a pretty fun trip down the south of yeah. China, didn't so you? Recently? Very different yeah. types of experiences. Yeah. So I went all the way up north to Inner Mongolia, and then I went mm -hmm. all the way down to Sanya. It's an island off the right. coast of mainland mm -hmm. um, China. Yeah. And it's just paradise. Yeah. I went to a resort and had lovely beaches and yeah. pools and... It was amazing to just see that you can really experience all types mm -hmm. of climates and cultures yeah. throughout all of China. It's so vast and yeah, very ty different types definitely, of traveling. Definitely, definitely. A little bit more relaxing there, probably. More relaxing <laughs> just uh, at, by the yeah. pool and the beach. Yeah. So nice uh, tropical cuisines, a lot of mm -hmm. seafood, fresh seafood. Uh, that was really nice yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, what about you? Oh, you had another one that you I did. To talk about. I, uh, yeah, so I guess again, we're sort of covering all corners here. I was actually in the northwest provinces yeah. uh, just about a month ago. Uh, again, I was traveling with a friend of mine. We took an overnight train, so this was my first overnight, overnight train. train. <laughs> I think this one was 23 hours, so it was a quite long, a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, but uh, still, it went, it went by like that. We uh, took a train from Shanghai all the way to uh, Lanzhou, which was the home of the Lanzhou beef noodles. Mm -hmm. It's in the uh, the province is, sorry, it's bl I'm blanking on it right now. That's okay. Um, it's in the Gansu province. Um, and then we, uh, we arrived there, we had some traveling around there. Again, very, it's a Muslim uh, area, so a lot of a completely different culture uh, than the rest of China, yeah. different food. And then we uh, actually took a bus uh, into Qinghai province, one of the most sort of uh, unpopulated areas in China. We traveled around some of the biggest lakes in China, mountain ranges. We saw yaks. Yes. Uh, we drove up to uh, an over an elevated pass that's I think almost four thousand meters wow. in the in the air. Okay. Uh, we we you know hang, hung out in Yurts actually as well, but in a completely different part of the country. Different part of the country. <laughs> um, we actually rented a driver for that part. So that's another thing that you can do here. It's really affordable. We actually hired just a local driver to drive us around the sites because it's so spread out. Yeah. Um, and that was again probably very different from an experience in Sanya. Uh, but just shows you just some of the uh, some of the different types of adventures you can have here. Definitely, and going yeah. off of that driver, yeah. so another experience I had was yeah. in Xi'an. Actually, I went with my parents. Mm -hmm. um, we took a train to Xi'an okay. from Beijing as well, and we got there. And there were so many things we wanted to see, <laughs> yeah. and they were very far away from each other. So the best way or best thing we found mm -hmm. was a driver. We just paid a flat fee, mm -hmm. and we had him for two days, and wow. they took us everywhere. So that's kind of nice as well of traveling in China. You can definitely negotiate and make mm -hmm. um, packages with uh, different people as yeah. you travel, and another great way to meet people. And I, refer, I referred him to other people <laughs> traveled to Xi'an as well. Oh, that's amazing. Um, that's where the terracotta, terracotta warriors Absolutely. are, so also an amazing experience in itself. Absolutely. Um, so I guess what we maybe want to do today here, just to give you guys the chance to maybe get involved with this a little bit here, um, is maybe to go through a few questions yeah. as well, because again, we could probably talk about our own experiences forever. So we want to, you know, uh, share with you some of our uh, knowledge as well. So open this up to any questions and comments that you guys have as yeah. well. So feel free um, if you're on our Facebook, if you're on our Instagram uh, right now to comment below if you have any questions. Um, while you're doing that as well, like us on Facebook yeah. and Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube as well, YouTube, LinkedIn. Everywhere. <laughs> We're all over the place. Um, and comment away right now if you have any questions, and we'll sort of get started. We'll give you guys a couple minutes yeah, give you and guys. then we'll start answering those. All right. Let's see. Okay, first question. Do you need to be able to speak Chinese to travel around China? Good question. Good question. Uh, no, you don't need to be able to speak Chinese. Um, Obviously, it helps in some scenarios, mm -hmm. but again, as we mentioned, you get by without it. I um, mean, you get by with little pieces here and there. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. train yeah. stations <laughs> and airports usually have English as well, so it's yeah. kind of nice to have that reference. Absolutely. Um, and usually by pointing at things and signs, you can again get by Absolutely. and try to have a conversation. You yeah. have translation apps as well. Exactly. Um, I never leave home without my phone, <laughs> and everything is in there. <laughs> Absolutely. And and then the thing you'll find, especially when you leave some of the bigger cities, even in the big cities too, you will find people here in China are very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're here. They're, they're very keen to help you yeah. um, as a foreigner here traveling about. Um, you can just you know sh you're if you're curious about their culture, curious about the city and you sort of show a little humility, they will welcome you in and they will show you their home, they'll show you their food, they'll show you, uh, you know, wherever, wherever you want. They will, I've had, you know, locals actually give me a tour of their city. Yeah. Um, just you meet them and they, they want to share their, their culture. Um, and you don't really need to, to know the language much. Um, I, again, I've taken actually language courses here myself, and I think you have too. Yes. Which, not fluent, yes. not fluent, <laughs> not fluent, but we can get by with a little bit. And actually, traveling helps you to practice. develop and practice. 
um, your Mandarin, if that's something you're interested in. And a lot of locals also want to practice their English skills. <laughs> yeah. So they see a foreigner and they definitely want to practice their skill set right. and exchange that with you. So that's yeah. a nice um, give and take in that regard Absolutely. when it comes to language overall. Absolutely. And one quick note on that, when we talk about some of the translation, I think one thing that sometimes people don't even realize how easy it is, is WeChat Translate. Yes. So you can actually add, if you meet them, a you know, local, local friend, you can add them on WeChat and you can just message back and forth, full conversations, them in Chinese, you in English, and you just, just hold it, press, press it, and it translates. And it's so accurate, it is, it <laughs> weirdly is. accurate. So um, very, very easy to do. It's a nice tool to have. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Have question. All right. Um, what is the best water town to go to? Ooh. So what is a water town, first of all? Maybe for some of you who don't know what a water town is? Do you yeah, okay, sure. Do you know <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if I'll give the, the best definition, but uh, there's something that a lot of these little ancient cultural towns, especially around a city like Shanghai, I believe Beijing as well has some nearby water towns yes, perhaps. Yeah. Um, essentially, imagine a, an old village that you think of from the Qing Dynasty, um, that ancient uh, sort of the temples, you see little water canals, um, almost like a, an, an Asian Venice, yeah. some people say. Yeah, like um, and they're all over the place. Um, so they're very accessible from, from the big yeah. cities. I'm not sure, have you, do you have a favorite? Uh, Suzhou, as yeah. I think has been my favorite yeah. so far. It's not too far off from Shanghai. Um, I actually visited the first time I came to China okay. before I was even a part of EF. Um, yeah. And that was one of the most uh, beautiful cities I've seen. It yeah. is like the Venice of yeah. China. There's a lot of canals and you can, um, they're not gondolas, but they're little <laughs> boats that you ride. Yeah. Um, and it's just really pretty and a good combination yeah. of that city with a bit of more nature involved yeah. in them as well. So yeah. Suzhou is probably my preference. Mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't been to a lot of them, so maybe, I don't know, if you have Yeah, I've ones? been to, I think, one or two. Um, there, again, there's, there's so many of them. Uh, some of them are a little bit more commercialized. Uh, I think one of them, actually, Mission Impossible 3 was filmed in. Oh. I was supposed to go there, um, but I ended up going to another one. Um, I, again, I took, I think, a bus there from Shanghai. It was called uh, Nanshun, and I went by myself, you know, just hopped on the bus one Saturday morning. It was about two hours away, okay. and spent the night there. Really, really quaint, uh, quite, quite peaceful. And again, you know, you pop on a, a canal boat. I'm not sure what they they're, they're called here. <laughs> um, and they were playing, you know, the local music as yeah. well. Uh, and it was, yeah, just one of those very, very quaint experiences. It's nice that they're near big city sometimes yeah. because it's a good escape from the big city life as well. So Certainly. that's a nice perk from being in Beijing or Shanghai. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not familiar with too much with Guangzhou and Shenzhen yeah. down south, but I'm sure that there's something similar over Absolutely. there as well. Absolutely. So speaking right. of cities, yeah. what city is a must-see to visit? <laughs> I think that's a really hard that's question. That's a tough question. That's a tough question. Um, it really depends on what you're looking yeah. for and what you're interested in mm -hmm. and what type of travel you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, if you, I, it's really hard to answer. <laughs> it's hard. I think because you've lived in two of the cities that people might say are the, the ones you have to see here, yeah. Shanghai and Beijing. So you've been pretty lucky in that regard. If you're coming for the first yeah. time, I definitely think Shanghai and Beijing are two must-sees. Yeah. It's where Beijing's the capital. There's a lot of culture there, the Forbidden City, um, as well as the summer, the Imperial Guard, Gardens. Uh, there's a lot of history mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a must, the Great Wall, of course. Of course. Um, but then Shanghai is a combination of history and modern. In China, yeah. so it's also a must with the Pearl Tower and the Bund. Um, yeah. That scenery is very unique to China itself. Certainly, certainly. So yeah, if you're looking at the big cities, I would say yeah. Beijing and Shanghai are must. But there are so many, so other many, cities. so many. Yeah. Um, I think Xi'an as well. Xi'an, I've heard, I, I've heard as well. Yeah. Are it's something to kind of tick off that bucket list mm -hmm. if you're really into Asian culture in China. It's one of those ones you always hear about when you're exactly. in school, yes. when you're in the history books, you always see the Terracotta Warriors, yes. and it's pretty surreal to then see them live yeah. like that. Definitely. But again, it, I think as Joanne said, it's sort of just one of those things that uh, it depends on what you're looking for. It is. And maybe you'll find that in your first year, you don't have time to see everything, and that's why you maybe will send the second year with you have here, uh, like we've all done as well. <laughs> uh, maybe a third year as well, because yeah. there's just endless amounts to see in China. And, and then also outside of China too. We haven't even touched on that. Well, yeah. Maybe you can do your own research into that too, but very easy to fly from these areas into the rest of Asia as well for There's your travel. There's actually going to be another talk yeah. on, that it exactly. on yeah. travel outside of China. Yeah. So stay tuned for that stay in a tuned. couple of weeks. <laughs> um, but yeah, focus on China. Yeah. Uh, Chengdu is also very popular. Oh. That's where the pandas are. Uh, and a lot of people really enjoy um, going there to see yeah. the sanctuary as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And if you like spicy food, Chengdu is Hot the pot. land of the spicy food. Hot pot, 
Um, it is mouth numbing. Yes. Uh, it is something to, to see, and definitely, yeah, another another sort of place to tech, check off, tick off to. So, all right, maybe the next question there. Okay, next question: How easy is it to book plane or train tickets? Wow. Very, very incredibly easy. easy. And whether you speak English or Mandarin, if you don't speak any Mandarin, it's super easy. Uh, we actually use an app here um, in English called C Trip. Um, and you can actually book hotels, you can book trains, and you can book flights on there, uh, all from your phone, actually. So it's super easy. It's really easy. Um, easier than back home as well. You can just scroll in the destination you want to go to, mm -hmm. check out uh, what dates you want to go, and yeah, and you can put in any currency you want as well. Yeah. So you can see that. And you just book it right there. Um, and then you can, if you're booking, say, a train ticket, you just show up at the train station, you show them your little, your little number there. And your passport. Your passport. They know that they need to give you your ticket. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and they don't, yeah, you don't need to speak any, any Mandarin there. They know exactly what to do. Um, and yeah, very simple, yeah. very simple. You can learn the word for ticket. Now, exactly, yeah. And show both things. And exactly. And you touched on one thing that's really important is your passport. Yes. Traveling in China, need your passport for everything. Uh, so just be aware of that too. That will be the main form of ID that you yeah. use as a foreigner um, mm -hmm. here in China. So definitely make sure that that's something that you have taken care of. Yeah. Do not lose your passport. <laughs> it's very important, especially Absolutely. when you're traveling. Keep that Absolutely. safe. Uh, but yes, that passport yeah. is your main form of ID Certainly. Uh, when you're over here. Certainly. All right. Another. Okay. And speaking of essentials, mm -hmm. what are some other essentials I should pack when traveling from oh, China? Good question. Good question. Yeah. Um, well, obviously your identification, so your passport, your phone, your chargers, all those things, those are sort of uh, mandatory. If you have a good camera you want to use, obviously that. Um, other than that, um, it, it's really up to you. Um, a lot of, you know, in terms of guidebooks, things like that, people, most of them just use them on your phone now. Yeah. You can use apps that will show you around the cities wherever you are, um, English apps, Chinese apps as well. Um, snacks. Snacks, yeah. Important. <laughs> snacks are important. Um, Weather yeah. dependent as well. That's so a good point. Yeah, think about that. So, do you need an umbrella, mm -hmm. or if you, do you need a rain jacket, mm -hmm. or um, maybe rain boots? Yeah. Or maybe it's different type of weather, so you need to prepare for Absolutely, both sunny yeah. and warm, and then a bit colder. Because it really depends in China. You may be in Shanghai in the winter and it's cold, but you go down to Sanya, like where you were in the yeah. south, and it's beach weather. It's like a Hawaii of it, China. It is Hawaii. Um, so keep that in mind. But again, keep in mind when you're traveling in China, um, even in the so-called smaller cities. Uh, they're quite, you know, they're quite uh, large still. So, you know, I was in Lanzhou, which is where some people might say to be, you know, fairly small in terms of more rural or off the beaten path a little bit. Still three million people. You know, there was, uh, I think, a Uniqlo I went to when I needed a jacket. You could buy that. Um, you can buy on the street all the, the fake sort of knockoffs yeah. of brands as well. So if you forget something, you can always buy those too. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe one thing keep in mind though, hand sanitizer oh, yeah. is always nice to have. Keep your, keep tissue clean. Yeah, as tissue well. as well. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. nice just little packet. They sell them everywhere yeah. um, here in China. Yeah. yeah. All right, next question. Uh, how much money do you suggest I bring in cash, or uh, should I be okay with electronic apps? Right. Like Alipay or WeChat? Right. Yeah. Electronic yes. <laughs> payment pretty much works all yeah. throughout China. Um, Absolutely. I don't know if you've been to yeah. more rural areas. Has it been the same? It has. It's been quite surprising, actually. I remember we were in a yurt in uh, Qinghai province. Uh, we actually just had some yak milk tea um, in the middle of nowhere. And my friends were visiting here, and they thought, okay, we must have to bring cash for this. Yeah. And you know, the, the little old lady who was serving us pulls out her phone, I scan her QR code, and oh, pay yeah. in WeChat. So um, everything is really in WeChat. But it is nice maybe to have uh, a couple hundred... So Kwai um, in cash, so RMB um, in cash, because you never know, your phone might die, mm -hmm. you might lose your phone, um, or you might not have signal as yeah. well. Um, and it's nice just to have a little bit of cash on hand, um, especially, you know, some places, yeah, it's just nice to have a little backup. Yeah, it's a it's good just backup nice. plan yeah. to just have some cash with you, yeah. but I barely have cash yeah. on me um, when I'm not traveling, for example, because everything is so equal oh, with so. WeChat and mm -hmm. Alipay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really nice perk of being yeah. in China. Absolutely. And are there any times of the year I shouldn't travel? <laughs> Good point. Maybe I think I see where you're going season. with this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, no. And I was like, uh, yeah. holiday season. Yeah. 
seasons seem Absolutely. to be a bit busier. So Chinese New Year mm -hmm. um, in February or the October holiday, Absolutely. Um, the train stations tend to be really busy. So Absolutely. it's smart to be strategic about when you're going and how you're getting to your mm -hmm. destination, if it's via train or via airport, mm -hmm. for example. But it's, um, it's not saying that you can't travel during yeah. those times. Obviously, this is when you get a week you know, to, to travel, see around a little bit. It's just being aware of it exactly. um, and booking early. So flights and tickets, as much as we say, you know, I can go on my phone on sea trip and book a train ticket for later this weekend to mm -hmm. go travel somewhere. Around the new big holidays, you want to be doing that a month, two months ahead of time, ahead of time as yeah. soon as you can. Um, and expect that it's going to be a little bit more expensive. Exactly. Give yourself some time. Um, one thing that you can always do though during those holidays, uh, just so that you don't have to worry about dealing with the trains and flights and stuff like that, you could always go on an organized trip as yeah. well. Um, and they'll pick you up in a bus and you'll meet a lot of fun people and they'll take you somewhere and sort of do all that for you. Um, which is what I did last Chinese New Year because I had forgotten. <laughs> it was my first Chinese New Year here. I'd forgotten to buy tickets early. I didn't take Joanne's advice. Yeah. And uh, I signed up on a trip maybe a week beforehand and you know, we took a, a bus five hours south of Shanghai. It was about a group of about 30 of us yeah. and we spent Chinese New Year in this really small little village in Zhejiang province. Went hiking, um, you know, lit off Chinese fireworks, had a big meal. Um, and they, you know, I didn't have to deal with the train or a flight, so that's one way to look yeah. at it. Or I'm you can sure. have a staycation as well. Yeah. This past October holiday, yeah. I stayed in Shanghai and I got mm -hmm. to do a lot of the touristy things that I yeah. hadn't been able wow. to do um, on a regular weekend. So that was nice to just enjoy the city. It wasn't as busy as mm -hmm. it usually is because mm -hmm. a lot of people do leave the bigger cities, uh, yeah. but it was a nice relaxing week to just yeah. really get to be a tourist in my own city. Yeah, you sometimes forget about that. You, you live in these amazing cities yeah. like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, and you forget that you can just be a tourist here yeah. um, exactly. and explore. There's so much to see. Definitely. So, yeah. Is it safe to travel by yourself in China? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it sure is. Um, I've had no, no travels with that. I've traveled on my own. I've traveled with a friend, traveled in groups, and haven't really had any different experiences. Um, as I've said, people are really friendly here in China. Um, you may get some looks, especially yeah. while you're traveling on your own. Uh, you may get people staring and pointing, but it's all in good fun. It is. Um, they, they're just curious about you. And I think it's actually you know, one of the more rewarding experiences I've had is traveling on your own. Yeah. You feel pretty uh, empowered to say that you can travel around China on your own. And you end up in some pretty fun experiences Definitely. with locals Definitely. as well. Um, what, what about your experiences so with that? We mostly traveled in groups or, yeah. or with friends or with family, but thinking back at that first mm -hmm. train ride to Inner Mongolia, yeah. we all booked our tickets separately, so mm -hmm. we were all in different carts. Wow. So I was the only foreigner <laughs> in my <laughs> train cart. It was a six-bed um, wow. bunk, so I was the only foreigner, and I had five Chinese locals <laughs> just staring at me. Um, and then it, they were wanting to practice their English, so that was a really neat yeah. experience as well. So we added each other on WeChat, and we were practicing our English and our my, my Chinese. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that was really rewarding as well. But I was, again, the only local, um, as a female, I feel I felt fine and comfortable yeah. and safe as well, so that was really nice as well. That's great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, last two questions, okay. and I'll do this. Is accommodation expensive? Mm, it question. really depends what you're looking for and where you're going. Yeah. Uh, hostels can range from 50 to maybe 100 RMB. RMB, yeah, perhaps. And that's so up, you know, in, in US dollars, that'd be 100 RMB is just under, I think, 15, 15, 30 dollars. Yeah. Um, it really depends on what you're looking for and mm -hmm. what you're interested in. If you want a hotel, obviously it'll be a bit more yeah. expensive, but I think overall very affordable. Um, I'm a fan of hostels, especially mm -hmm. that's a good way yeah. to get to know locals and mm -hmm. fellow travelers as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they tend to be on the more um, affordable, affordable side. Yeah, absolutely. And, I haven't had any problems with yeah. any hostels. Um, I've done both hostels and hotels. And you can book these on your sea trip as well. So you can always scroll through, see when you, you're popping into the city, um, either book before or even when you arrive in the city, you think, okay, I'm here, I can just check out the hostels. Um, I usually stay in hostels as well, but you know, when I've traveled with some friends, uh, we've actually stayed in hotel rooms and usually back, you know, I'm from Canada, back home I would never think to stay in a hotel yeah. room because it's going to be exorbitant prices. In China, you know, between myself and another friend, we'll get you know, a room with uh, two double beds in a fairly nice hotel um, and end up spending, you know, maybe 150 RMB total. So it's about 75 RMB each. So it's similar to a hostel at times. And oftentimes you'll get the, uh, the hotel breakfast in China, is, which are fantastic. So the buffets are, uh, the buffets are, are good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, it depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, like um, you said, similar from in the U.S. I'm originally from Puerto Rico and then lived in the mm -hmm. U.S. So definitely when you travel <laughs> abroad, you're like hostels. That's hostels, where yeah. I'm going to stay. Uh, but yeah, we can have the both, best of both worlds basically Absolutely. with both options. Yeah. All right. Okay, last question. So in your year as a teacher, is it possible to um, travel to the must-see destination? I think it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah. again, I started off as a teacher um, my first year in China, and I think overall I did around six destinations total within my first mm -hmm. year alone. Um, so that was a nice perk. And again, a lot of it is weekend trips. So yeah. you have, as a teacher, 21 days total to use to your advantage. <laughs> Um, and as you see fit, so be strategic about that. Mm -hmm. I was able to take a big trip outside of China for the October holiday, wow. um, but then I did a lot of weekend trips. Yeah. I did it in Mongolia, Mongolia, yeah. Xi'an, um, Datong, which is in the outskirts of um, Beijing as well, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of really neat cities that you just can get on a train yeah. and be there for a weekend and then come back to. So yeah, it's kind make of nice. the most of your time here. Honestly, uh, you have these places at your fingertips and you can just spend your weekends, like you mentioned, going out there. Um, and, and yeah, I think it's really, really easy to get around and see as much as you want. Um, it's really up to you though. Don't feel forced to go to a new place every weekend, but it definitely, if you want to, you can do that. It's and it's, it's very doable. And that's sort of a little bit the route I've taken a little bit. All these experiences that I've talked about, I've only been here for just over a year now. So this is all for my first year. And I've seen Northwestern China, I've seen Southwestern China, yeah. seen you know, Southern China actually, some of the big cities like Guangzhou, some smaller cities. And, and yeah, it just gives you a little bit of a taste of where you want to see next. But um, certainly you can get a, a wide range in your first year here. Yeah. All right, so I think that finishes up all of our questions here for today. Um, and, and thank you so much for joining us for our sort of EF talk here about travel. And as you hint, uh, we obviously have a lot more of these videos coming. We already have some on our YouTube channel. So be sure, like us, subscribe. Bye. Um, Instagram, comment, what do we got? Follow, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, everything, everything. YouTube as well. Um, <laughs> our videos are going to be up there. Click on the links, watch the videos, you know, comment. If you have any questions, comment away in your Facebook. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have some of these experiences yourself, come join us. Come join us. Let us know. Go to our career site, and uh, maybe you'll speak with Joanna or I. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. -bye.